This is how I keep myself accountable while working 48 hours a week along with preparing for USMLE Step 1 exam at the same time. Every day I would track my progress like how many UL questions I did and which system I studied from first aid. And let me be honest, it hasn't been easy so far. There were some days when I came home completely exhausted after a 12 hour day shift but I would do at least 5 to 10 UL questions on that day because skipping a whole day without studying anything would make it harder in the long run. If you are preparing for USMLE Step 1 exam along with a full-time job, you are not just facing a difficult exam, you are fighting against fatigue, time constraints and mental exhaustion. But understanding these challenges is the first step to overcoming them. So in this video, I will talk about different challenges in preparing for USMLE Step 1 exam, setting a realistic study timeline, best resources to use and no wasting time, how to craft an effective study schedule, then how to assess yourself that if you are prepared for the exam, some two to three weeks before the exam strategy and finally some advice and encouragement. The first challenge is the time constraint. You will be having limited study hours after work. If you are working 48 hours per week, then your work will be consuming around 60 hours from your whole week. And if you sleep 7 to 8 hours per day, your sleep will also be consuming around 60 hours from the whole week so you are left with approximately 35 hours to 40 hours per week to study and you have to utilize those hours in the best way possible the second challenge would be the consistency if you are working in the hospital and you have a call then the post call day you would be exhausted and it will be very difficult for you to study on that day but you have to maintain a routine a consistency and you need a lot of discipline for that that you study consistently on every day along with job and the third challenge is the shift that you will feel from the clinical practice to the basic sciences heavy exam. You will get used to it as you progress along in your preparation. Now let's talk about setting a realistic study timeline for your USMLE step 1. If you are working full time in a hospital and also preparing for step 1, then you should dedicate 6 months to 12 months for your USMLE step 1. But if you are not working in the hospital and you are free in your home studying all the time, then you should dedicate like 5 to 6 months for your USMLE step 1. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, crafting an effective study schedule for your USMLE step 1 and how you fit your studying into your full-time job. So if I talk about myself, I was working 48 hours per week in a tertiary care hospital in anesthesiology department. Usually my week start from Tuesday. On Tuesday, I was having 12 hours call from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then on Wednesday, I was working 8 to 2. Thursday again 8 to 2, Friday again 8 to 2. On Saturday I was working 2 p.m. to 8 a.m. Sunday morning and the, after my call day Sunday is my off and Monday is my off. So this is how my schedule of work was divided. I was working 48 hours and in this schedule I basically incorporated my study schedule. Now what you need to do whenever you are having two relaxed days in a week like in my scenario the Sunday and Monday were a bit relaxed days. Just open first aid on those two days and try to read the whole system. The purpose was not to just memorize the whole system, the purpose was to just go through the content and get familiar with first aid, like what is written in the embryology section of first aid of that particular system, what is written in the anatomy, physiology, then pathology section and try to cover it as much as possible in just those two days. Do not spend any more time in the start on first aid. So I used to just uh, go through the system on those two days. After that, on Tuesday, I was having 12 hour call. I tried to do UVL on that day and most of the times I was able to do like 5 to 10 questions only because I was a bit exhausted after 12 hour call. On Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, I was working 8 to 2 in the hospital after coming home. I tried to do the UVL of that particular system and most of the times I was doing like 25 to 30 UVL questions. On Saturday, I was having an 18 hour call from 2 p.m. to 8 a.m. on Sunday. And sometimes I try to do U world question in the hospital, like five to six questions uh, maximum. And sometimes I watch a sketchy video randomly in the hospital. And after coming home on Sunday, uh, most of the time I was post call very tired and I was not uh, like in best of my senses to like read the first aid or do the U world. So most of the times in my scenario, on Sundays I was watching sketchy videos or watching board and beyond videos of that particular system. I do not recommend board and beyond videos now because you were and first is more than enough but I'm talking about myself because on post call day I was like not very conscious and my focus level was very low to do U world or first aid. So I try to be productive I used to spend my Sundays on board and beyond videos. So the take home message is that you just read 
paper stayed in two days very like superficially in a bird eye view and then you do the u world of that particular system while you are doing the u world questions you open first aid and read that particular topic from which you did the u world question and you mark that and you understand that oh yeah that was the concept written in first aid in this line and this is the u world question that uh, they created from this particular concept so uh, going through like this, uh, going through the first year and did the whole U world. It will decode the whole first state for you. By following this strategy, when you complete one system, you will move on to the next system. Same way you read the system in two days and start the U world question in the coming week and try to complete the U world as soon as possible. So I would suggest after completing like two system, you just go to the immunology section of first state and read the immunology section and do the whole U world of immunology. Because immunology is like incorporated in all the systems and you do it if in the early phase of your preparation when you will be completing other systems your immunology will keep on revising because it comes in all the systems after completing all the systems and immunology you go to the biochemistry and after studying it from first aid and do the u world questions uh, if you want to incorporate other resources as well you can do that but after going through this you are done with it as well and if you have watched all the sketchy videos throughout this period while covering all the systems so you will take you just one or two days is to read the microbiology and antimicrobial section after reading that just do the u world questions it's the same way you did all the systems and you are done with that for general pathology and general pharmacology same way you read first aid and do the u world you are done with it and at the end you are left with biostats and ethics for biostat if you have watched randy neil videos it will take you like one or two days to watch those videos read the first aid and do the u world you are done with biostat as well for ethics you just do all the u world questions but for ethics keep in mind that don't do ethics in just two to three days try to do ethics question they are like 140 to 150 u world questions of ethics try to do like 15 to 20 questions per day and try to cover ethics in like one to two weeks because it basically requires your deeper understanding of like concepts and understanding of ethical scenarios which you slowly develop not like in one or two days so by doing slowly slowly some ethical questions you slowly develop your understanding of those concepts and how to like react in different scenarios i think it really helps so studying like this and going through the whole first aid once and doing all the u world questions which are around like 3700 you get into the assessment part where you give nbmes and assess yourself how prepared you are for your usmle step one if i talk about myself it took me like seven months to go through the first aid once and doing like 70 percent of u world i was falling behind in my schedule so i just gave my first nbme 25 and i scored like 66 percent which is not very good not very bad and it give me a baseline that where i stand and how much i have to improve now if any one of you is falling behind in their schedule they have some exams or other responsibilities to deal with and they are rushing their us mele step one exam i highly suggest that if your first nbme score falls below 65 percent then just go back to your world and complete it and if it is more than 65 percent then you proceed forward with the preparation as you are reviewing your first nbme you start making a list of all the weak topics that you got questions wrong and also you are marking those topics in first aid with a highlighter so as you complete the review you start the second pass of first aid i did like uh, the second pass of all the 10 systems after that i gave my second nbme and on that i scored around 68 percent so that gave me the motivation that now i am improving after that i reviewed that nbme marked the wrong topics and i did the second pass of the remaining general topics including including biochemistry, micro, immuno and the rest and after that I gave my third NBME in that I scored around 73% so that gave me the motivation that I am improving now I need to like improve a lot more so after my second pass I started the third pass of first aid I completed the whole third pass all the 10 system and all the general topics and i gave my fourth nbme on that uh, i scored again 72 percent the goal basically here is you need to score minimum 75 percent or 220 in two consecutive nbmes then you can go and book the date of your us mele step one exam so i scored 73 and 72 percent which is a bit less than 75 percent but i trust myself and i trust my instincts that i can book the exam now so i booked the exam after three weeks from that 
that day i scored 72% and i gave free 120 like after 3 to 4 days on that i scored 69% which is like a, a pretty average score uh, keeping in mind the free 120 is like kind of your actual exam uh, i reviewed that free 120 after that i gave another nbme nbme 30 on that i scored 80 percent so that really gave me the motivation that uh, now i can go and pass the step one exam uh, after i gave that nbme 30 right after one day i gave nbme 31 on that i scored again 76 percent i myself didn't do the ethical questions from emboss and i was clearly struggling on my usmle step one exam uval was not enough for ethics and that's why i am saying just dedicate one day to ethics and do all the 130 to 140 questions that emboss have and you would be good to go apart from that in the last two to three weeks you are focusing on your free 120 and you are focusing on your first aid all the big topics that you have already marked in first aid so basically on those two weeks it is just you and your first aid and you are keep on revising all the week topics and you are just going through it again and again as much as you can one thing i also want to mention here is that just be motivated and be confident in that period because it matters a lot naturally a person feels overwhelmed when the exam is coming there is an exam anxiety as well so just keep yourself calm motivated confident that you have passed a lot of nb MEs, you trust your NBME score that you have passed those so you will pass the exam as well and it really matters a lot at the end some final advice some encouragement and some mistakes to avoid my number one advice is that consistency and discipline matters a lot than the number of hours you study for your USMLE step one the day you start your USMLE journey just keep track of all the UL questions you do in a day then count all the questions you did in a week and try to do a bit more than that in this way if you are disciplined and consistent from the start you will prepare yourself best for the step one exam in the long run secondly you are not alone in this journey many people before you have done it and many people who will come after you will do it as well so believe in yourself you can do it as well now do let me know what is your biggest struggle with the usmle step one exam preparation do comment down below and i will try to help you out and by saying this that's pretty much it wrap up this video hope you get something out of it and learned something new if you did do subscribe to the channel and watch this video where i share my usmle exam day experience and i'll see you in another video bye bye